Welcome to our review of Trick Draw, a fast playing card game from Housefish Balloon, who we have to thank for sending us a review copy to check out. Trick Draw was designed by Blake Propach and Morteza Reinhanaja. This Western fantasy card game features artwork by Michael Kruda and Li Chang Mei and was published in late 2022 by House, House Fish Balloon LLC after a successful Kickstarter campaign. Now, this small box game plays two to five players super quickly. While mm -hmm. listed as being for ages 12 plus, we think younger players could pick up this game pretty easily. Yeah. It's fairly light, but it is a step above most mass market card games. Now, Trick Draw is a card driven race to 10 victory points. Each turn, you draw a card and play a card. Each card can be placed face down for one point or face up, doing its ability that's on the card. Now, many of those abilities will let you play or draw more cards, as well as flip over cards already in play. Card combos, timing, tactics, and memory are all going to play a role in Trick Draw. This is also the first game set in the Salundria universe. Now, for, what a look, for a look at what you get with this rapid-fire Wild West shooter card game, check out our Trick Draw unboxing video on YouTube. You won't actually see everything, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> now, Trick Draw comes in a cool crate-shaped box with a magnetic lid. Inside the lid is a reminder that the game is a race to 10 gold, and under that lid is a plastic insert with room for two sets of cards, because there are two versions of this game. One that comes with one deck, which is what we're looking at, and a copy that has two decks that doubles the player count. The rule book is tall and fairly long, but the actual rules aren't all that complicated. While the text was annoyingly small, the number mm -hmm. of examples given was appreciated. In the back of the rule book, you will find a card glued into it. Don't bother trying to remove this, as there was an error made, and it is permanently mm -hmm. glued in there. Now, when you pick up the game, you should be getting an extra copy of this card. Now, under the instructions, you find a small box labeled Volume 2 Trick Draw. As you can see in the unboxing video, this completely baffled me. I had no idea what this was and thought maybe it was an expansion because it said Volume 2. Now, I know this contains a very silly, very simple three card card game called House Fish Balloon which the designer expects you to play to determine start player when playing trick draw. So if you do open this and you see volume two, don't be worried, open it right away, go for it. So all that's left are cards and there's a rather large stack of these. They're good quality, easy to shuffle and feature some nice artwork. Now, while some of the cards are a bit dark, the clarity of the text on them makes up for that as that's what's most important during the play. Now with that, let's move to an overview of play. To win Trick Draw, you have to be the first person to 10 points. Game ends immediately at 10 points. Note that could happen on any player's turn, not necessarily the active player. The best way to start a game of Trick Draw is to play a quick game of Housefish Balloon. This is a small three card game that comes with every copy of Trick Draw. Since this is a review of Trick Draw, we'll leave you to figure out how to play that game on your own. Don't worry, it's super easy. Now, once you know who's starting, they shuffle all the cards and deal out two cards to each player and put the deck in the middle where everyone can reach it. That's it. Probably the quickest setup of any game we've reviewed so far on the show. Each turn, the active player draws a card and then either plays a card or draws two more cards. When playing, you can place a card face down or face up. Face down cards are each worth one point. Face up, the cards have abilities. Then players can use any uh, once per turn any abilities on their existing cards in play. The various card abilities are what makes Trick Draw work. Card abilities include discarding cards to draw more cards, playing more cards, or flipping cards over, including yours or other players, instantly drawing cards and keeping some of them, flipping cards from two different players, stealing a card and flipping it, or flipping all your cards, and more. Some of these abilities go off as soon as the card is played, and every time it's flipped back over to its front. And mm -hmm. others go off when you want, uh, when you want, with a limit of once per turn. Now, after playing a card and activating a card, abilities play moves to the next player clockwise, and the game continues and some, until someone hits ten. Now, besides winning by getting ten points, there are three special cards in the deck: the temple, the key, and the treasure. 
having the right combination of two of these in play at any time instantly wins the game. Now, in addition to these basic rules, there's also a variant that we like quite a bit called the shootout game mode. When playing this way, when a player hits 10 points, you keep playing. Everyone else gets one more turn. At the end of that round, anyone who's tied for points is eliminated. You shot each other. Then the player who's left standing with the most points wins. Now you know what you get and how to use it. So it's time for our thoughts on Quick Draw. So when I originally signed up to check out this game, I totally thought I was getting a trick-taking card game. So the first thing you need to know is that this is not a trick taper, despite the name Trick Draw. Now, after getting over that misunderstanding, I was pleasantly surprised by how much fun we've been having with the card game we did get, even if it wasn't what I was expecting. Admittedly, as soon as you see the box and the art, the name makes complete sense. But it's quite understandable to think that a card game called Trick Draw, without that artistic hint, would be our favorite type of trick-taking card game. Now, Trick Draw is a very solid, super fast card game with surprising depth. The mechanics really couldn't be simpler. Draw a card, play a card face up or face down, then activate cards you have. But the actual powers on the cards and how they interact make for a rather fascinating game. Now, while there's strategies you can learn and knowing which ending type you're playing makes a big difference, you learn the mechanics of the game in seconds. Mm -hmm. Draw a card, play a card, one side or the other. That's it. Yeah. Now, these simple mechanics make it a joy to teach. And I love the fact there's really no setup time to this game. This reminds me of traditional playing card games where you just shuffle the deck, deal out some starting hands and go. It's nice to have a game that doesn't have lots of bits and boards and things to set up before you can even start playing. Of course, easy to learn mechanics doesn't mean an easy game. Very true. There is a slight learning curve to Trick Draw, and I would say most players have been kind of lost their first round. It isn't until you get to see what some of the cards do and how they interact that you, for you to really understand the beauty of this game. Now, once you see the various card combos and strategies around flipping and unflipping cards, that's when the game starts to shine. So you probably won't get it on that first play. Now, I don't find this to be a problem because Trick Draw is so short. I don't mind playing a full learning game when the game only takes 15 minutes and when players are usually more than willing to try a second round immediately after finishing the first. Deck composition is really the thing you need to grasp. And while you could let people go through the deck, it's easy enough to learn as you play, as long as you don't mind being a little bit uh, behind on your first play if others have played previously. Now, another aspect I like in Trick Draw is that there isn't just one way to win. It's not just about having 10 cards face down at one point each. That is one way to win. But most wins I've seen come from a combination of face down cards worth points and face up card abilities. And I've also seen a few quick wins using that Temple T treasure combo that does exist as well, though those don't come up very often. If any one strategy does seem to be better than anything else, it does feel like rally cards might be a little overpowered, but that can be countered if the other players are paying attention. If you know that there's the possibility someone could be collecting rally cards, it's up to the rest of the players to try to stop them. And that's the key, paying attention. There are a number of cues to look for as to how someone is trying to win. And of course, if you know that, you might very well be bluffing one of them and going for another. Now, one of the best aspects of this game is despite being a card game and thus highly random, I always felt like I had agency when playing. I feel like I'm making real decisions that matter, which are impacting my chance of winning or losing. As we discussed on our podcast episode about game pacing, that's great to find in a game that plays this quickly. Now, once everyone at the table is familiar with the deck, the game couldn't be much faster. The only real pauses come as you try to remember what another player has on the other side of a card you may want to flip. Now, while Trick Dodd does play okay at two players, we found it doesn't really start to shine until you've got at least three and then improve the more players you had. Now, I only have the single deck version of the game, so I didn't get to try it with six or more, but I think it's only going to get better the more players you have. I think the limiting factor at large counts will be the ability to pay attention and see those cues to know when someone is going for a certain win. 
Now, my only real disappointment with this game is that it wasn't a trick-taking game. And while I can't blame Housefish Balloon for that, because I'm the one that didn't do enough research, I just made the assumption a card game named Trick Draw would have tricks in it. Though I do have to say, I don't know, not having tricks in a game called Trick Draw is probably going to cause confusion for more people than me. If you saw this game on the shelf, I wouldn't be surprised if you made the same assumption I did. I, I don't know. In name only, I agree. But I think the art really sells the idea of a Wild West gunfight and that concept of a trick draw as opposed to a trick drawing card game. <laughs> yeah, overall, I was surprised and impressed by trick draw and always. Component quality is great. Mechanics are simple and super easy to learn and teach. And the gameplay is surprisingly deep and engaging. This is a great quick playing card game that features a lot of player agency for a game that's over in 15 minutes. Now, if you are on the hunt for a new filler game, something quick and easy to play at the start of the night, or as an end cap or to fill in between longer games, I think Trick Draw is a great fit. If you'd mm -hmm. like to play a game after a morning cup of tea, Trick Draw makes for a great tea game. If you like to have quick to play games on hand that handle a wide range of player accounts as well, Trick Draw is a good choice, especially if you pick up the two deck version that plays up to 10 players. What you aren't going to find here is a deep, thinky Euro with a ton of strategy and planning. That's just not what Trick Draw is, and you should probably give it a pass if that's all your group is into. Now, if you or your group are into fantasy western, somewhat steampunk things, this is a cool game to add to your collection. It's basically meant to be the first in a series of games set in a world house fish balloon called Salundria. Uh, it looks like the next thing they are working on is going to be a full role playing game. Based on what we're seeing here, it looks to be a cool universe, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Well, that's it for our look at Trick Draw, a super quick playing, card flipping race to 10 points that surprised us in many ways. What's a game that surprised you? by not only being not what you expected, but by being way better than you could have imagined. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it in the comments below. Now, before I go, I also want to call out that I will be publishing a written review of Trick Draw over at tabletopbellhop.com, where I'll be sharing a bunch of pictures from our plays and get into a bit more detail. So check that out when you've got time. Finally, if you did enjoy this review, please consider tipping your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop.